Hello and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. This week we've got some news from Amazon regarding their entrance into the XR industry. <laughs> VRChat gets its biggest suite of full updates yet. And we've got a ton of news from Meta to cover, from Airbridge to a massive hand tracking 2 update. And Elden Ring is getting a wild looking VR mod. That and so much more, we've got a lot of ground to cover. So let's just get right into the news. Elden Ring kind of took the gaming world by storm when it launched earlier this year. But to be honest, it didn't really seem like it was for me. I've never really been a huge fan of soul style games. But if you take that same formula and bring it into VR, well, I'm a little more interested now. And Luke Ross, the same guy that modded VR support into GTA 5, Cyberpunk 2077, Red Dead Redemption 2 is doing the exact same thing for Elden Ring. And it looks really, really good, like AAA quality levels of good, like this game was meant for VR. Interestingly, Elden Ring is a third person game, but he's optimizing it for a first person point of view for VR, and it looks surprisingly smooth for a game meant for third person. And you'll still be able to use the original perspective if you want with the mod, but he doesn't recommend it. But now into the meat of this episode, a lot happened with Meta and the Quest this past week. For one, we got a roadmap for all of their games releasing in 2022, Quest 2 got a massive hand tracking update, and it looks like Apple-like physical stores are on their way for Meta. And there may be some unrest forming in the ranks at Meta. First things first though, let's talk about the gaming showcase that just happened last week. Even though the showcase was uh, a little disappointing, we did get a couple really exciting announcements. As you all probably know, Boneworks is by far my favorite VR game out there, and Bone Lab Stress Level Zero's follow-up to Boneworks is releasing this year for Steam VR and Quest 2. Without a doubt, right now at least, this is the game that I'm most anticipating this year. And I have a feeling that once some of you actually get a chance to play it, you know, since it's been a PC VR exclusive, you'll understand why I love Boneworks so much. We also got a preview of Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, Aspire 2, and the expected Beat Saber DLC in Quest Exclusive exclusive cities VR. Also a new multiplayer co-op mode for Resident Evil 4 and something that kind of shocked me. I'm going to be honest, I'm not much of a sports game kind of person, but the new NFL Quest game looks pretty cool actually. I think it seems a lot easier on paper to make a good looking and well functioning football game in VR, but this actually looks pretty decent. And we all know Madden and other sports games sell consoles like crazy, so I'm curious to see the general people's reaction to when it does launch. The showcase however was only for games or releasing in 2022, so no Grand Theft Auto, Assassin's Creed, or Splinter Cell. But separate leaks from a recent Assassin's Creed playtest show that Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed game is on its way and in development. However, it's in a pretty unfinished state currently. Dubbed Assassin's Creed Nexus, playtesters ended up leaking entire levels of gameplay for better or worse, and well, and well, it looks pretty alright, but it's definitely a game built for Quest, and it's also really early on in its development, so I wouldn't judge too much of what we saw just yet. Kind of reminds me of like the mobile ports of games, if you know what I mean, which is a little disappointing, but whatever. But back on proper meta, they just launched a massive upgrade to their hand tracking on Quest 2. Just taking a look at these videos, the difference is huge. Meta just released an update to their Unreal and Unity SDKs, so developers can implement the changes in their own games, and some developers have already started working on integrating them into their games. If you're a fan of Unplugged, Lightbox, or Hand Physics Lab, expect to see these changes coming to hand tracking very soon. But there's kind of a bigger picture to all of this, really. The work meta does on hand tracking now affects every every device and piece of software they implement in the future and is slowly fundamentally changing the way standard VR devices are used. In fact, I find myself only using controllers on Quest 2 when I have to for games. Menu navigation and general browsing for me is entirely hand tracking now, which I find an interesting switch for me. It's been a very organic change and it's not how I've ever controlled VR before, and I think it's only a matter of time before more hand tracking reliant games start hitting the market. The only real bottleneck is making hand tracking better and more usable, which is exactly what this update does. I'm actually super interested in the future of VR controllers because, well, the future of VR controllers may not be traditional controllers at all. Instead, using something like a brain interface wristband, something that Meta is already pioneering to take inputs like analog sticks and button presses with control labs. With their devices, you just think and it happens, while hand and arm movements are unrestricted by controllers, instead reliant on just hand tracking. 
The controller, of course, still has its place, but I can legitimately see this being the somewhat near future of VR within the next five years. And plus it makes sense. Hands are the most intuitive controllers that we have. We just have to have them work better with software. But back to current VR and something pretty exciting for literally millions of users. This right here should excite a lot of Quest 2 owners. Airbridge is likely really real. A few weeks ago, I talked about a possibly upcoming product that will allow for far easier and consistent Wi-Fi streaming of VR content from a PC to a Quest or Quest 2, or hypothetically any Wi-Fi based PC VR solution. At the time, this was reliant on leaked code, but a user manual has recently been leaked as well, bringing us closer to confirming this as a product. And I'm making a big deal out of a USB dongle because this one little device will make Wi-Fi PC VR streaming significantly better and more accessible for probably millions of people. Having a dedicated Wi-Fi dongle for PC VR streaming effectively negates most of the problems Airlink and Virtual Desktop currently have. That being the harsh degradation of Wi-Fi signals, interference, traffic, etc. And if that's the case and this airbridge does come out sometime soon, the Quest 2 will probably have one of, if not the most solid Wi-Fi solutions out there for VR right now. Especially taking into account their compression algorithms and frame recovery. This is all great for users and for meta, but some things may not be going all that great at meta right now, which we'll get into in just a moment. But now I think it's time for a me. Break. This is a book from 1982 titled I Hate Video Games Handbook with this quote, if games are not stopped, this will be our future. And uh, yeah, pretty accurate. And now back to the news. According to multiple sources, there are quite a few employees at Meta, both current and former, that are having a hard time dealing with Mark Zuckerberg and it's for a kind of hilarious reason. He's completely and utterly obsessed with the metaverse. <laughs> and I'm actually being serious. It's seemingly serious affecting morale at the company. And it's left a lot of people frustrated and confused with one current employee saying, quote, it's basically fomenting disorganization and anxiety. People don't really seem to know what to deliver on or what to work on because there's no coherent strategy, end quote. <laughs> Yikes. And I guess we all know why they call him the Eye of Sauron, which yeah, they actually call him that. On a more serious note, one area where Meta is definitely not having any trouble currently is their storefront. On May 9th, the first ever physical Meta storefront is opening in Burlingame, California, and even though a lot of people think brick and mortar stores are a thing of the past, I kind of like this idea. In the store, there are going to be interactive Ray-Ban portal demos, a Quest 2 demo, and you can even get a 30 second mixed reality clip of your time spent inside VR. And not gonna lie, I'm all about showing people properly what VR is all about, and I really like this, and I think it does it pretty well. I think this is a pretty positive thing in general, and I wish that there were more public VR demos that weren't the crappy VR arcades with broken equipment. Not saying that all VR arcades are crappy, most of them are pretty good. But I have been to quite a few venues where the headsets are super outdated or the software's bad or base stations aren't set up properly to where tracking's lost all the time and it shows VR off in a bad light. At least we know that if Meta opens up stores, they're gonna show off VR as best that they possibly can. Moving on, VRChat pretty much just got its biggest public release update ever. Introducing Avatar Dynamics, bringing a totally new level of customization to your VRChat avatars that wasn't possible before. At least not without clients. <laughs> From custom colliders and contacts to inter-avatar interactions, fizz bones, and even custom drive animators, it really adds a new level of personalization and customization and immersion to VR chat. And I've been excited about this for a long time. But there's also a lot of other changes that they made listening to beta testers, overall UI improvements, in nameplate indicators, quick menu and menu options, as well as more intuitive menu changes to make things a little easier to navigate. They also added user-specific permissions now, so you can choose who does and doesn't get to interact with your avatar inside colliders, further performance and optimization improvements, manual bone angle limits, just to name a few updates. The results are pretty seriously impressive and even my performance now has been quite a bit better. Avatar Dynamics is shaping up to be the most impressive avatar update that we've seen yet and I'm pretty excited to see what comes next. So it's been a really chaotic last couple of weeks or months really, hearing all of these projects from Meta Cambria to the Pico Neo 3 Link to Neo 4 and Apple's mystery AR VR headset, but we're finally getting Amazon in on the XR action, and it seems like it's about time considering how much money is being invested into XR right now across the world. And here it is, or maybe a lack thereof. This is 
all we have on it currently and it's likely still a long ways out, but Amazon has been putting a lot of job advertisements up looking for specifically, you guessed it, computer scientists, program managers, designers, product managers, and a lot more. It's pretty obvious that they're building a team for this, quote, a magical and useful new to world XR consumer product, end quote. Come on, that's at least a little exciting. Currently, Amazon actually already has smart classes like the Facebook slash Ray-Ban stories, dubbed the Echo Frames, and the interesting part here is that these Amazon patent pictures are dated all the way back to 2012 and 13. So this is something that Amazon has had their eyes on for a long time now. But this is just the first time that we're hearing that Amazon is going all in on some new magical AR device. I still think it would be really interesting to see Amazon get into the standalone VR segment, but at least from what I see so far, they seem far more interested in augmenting your reality than giving you a virtual one. I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on this project in the future. So last week, HTC sent some pictures of a new device on Twitter that left a lot of people scratching their heads, wondering what the heck this thing was. And they finally fully revealed this system, it's the Vive Mars. Essentially, it's a real-time motion graphics green screen capture system that allows for way easier and more seamless virtual production, and it's something that I'd actually love to play with. I've actually been really trying to sink my teeth into Unreal Engine and virtual production lately using Vive trackers and a camera, and it seems like Mars is pretty much what the industry has been asking of them. HTC may not get everything right on the consumer front of VR, but they do tend to get things pretty well for the industry side of things. And so, yeah, this is Mars. It's pretty much a virtual production workhorse, putting together in a package a lot of tools that people have been jerry-rigging, basically. But now, it's time for question of the week from Bob Bacon. Should I get the Quest 2 or wait for the PSVR 2? And personally, I would rather recommend getting a Quest 2 and building a PC of some sort over time to get into standalone and PC VR. But there's also no harm in getting a Quest 2 now and PSVR 2 later, or even selling the Quest 2 if PSVR 2 is that great. Right now, even, there's a lot of great standalone content to enjoy for the time being. But I'm probably just a little partial to PC VR since that's where I spend most of my time. And that's it for question of the week. Make sure to leave your own down below and I may just answer yours next. There's a new stream schedule on Twitch. I'm really excited about it, including a new extended news day today for all the things that I couldn't cover in this video. And also check out my Discord server because there's a lot of cool stuff happening in there all the time, including some really awesome VR chat community meetups. And thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.